Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Investigamer here at QuakeCon. This right behind me is the brain that you'll see on the, I believe, cover art, if not just the posters and general media about the evil within. I think it looks pretty awesome. I actually just bought a poster with this brain on it. It's like a brain with uh, barbed wire going around it, and then there's actually a house right here. And they got a prop. Last year they had the mech from Wolfenstein, the wolf mech. And um, I just got a chance to play Evil Within, actually, this very game in a little private demo in a closed room, and I couldn't record the game itself. I thought about recording my reaction, but I just didn't feel like it. Um, I just wanted to enjoy the experience, so I did that. And I gotta say, it may just sound like I'm gushing and that I was gonna say this regardless, but I really enjoyed it. I tried to be skeptical because a lot of people were saying that they tried demos at E3 and stuff and didn't like it, but I went in there with all the skepticism I could, and it was amazing. It really was. It has the same atmosphere as Silent Hill. It has the same slow puzzles. You can either approach it in a slow fashion, like I said, or you can just go out guns a-blazing. You can run. You can sprint and like bust through doors if you want to. But I took the, the slow approach, and then whenever I had to backtrack, I obviously started running because I had to you know quicken the pace. But for the most part, it's a really fun game, and the combat is kind of a mix between Silent Hill and Resident Evil. It's not too fast and action-y. But it's not too slow either. You know, you can draw a gun on a guy and take him out in a second. And I love the idea of them being on the ground and you can burn their bodies if you're not sure if they're going to get back up. Uh, that's amazing. The matches will run out, but you can go back and get more. Uh, I think there's a cap on how many matches you can have as well as uh, ammo and that sort of thing. I'm not sure if that stuff is upgradable. We might see that in the future. I noticed that they have a crafting system and a video recently, uh, so that's cool. It might be upgradable. I do know that some things do change when you up the difficulty. Like, for instance, puzzles. The way puzzles work do change when you up the difficulty. A puzzle may just be unlocked when you are on the lowest difficulty. It may just unlock on automatically, whereas on a higher difficulty, you have to find everything out yourself. And there was a really cool puzzle in the demo I did play. It was this really large uh, mansion-like thing, kind of like the first Resident Evil, and you had to go into three separate areas and stimulate this little, it was a head on a table with a brain exposed, and there would be this little audio recording playing, and you basically have to stimulate a part of the brain based on what the audio recording is, is saying. You have to kind of figure it out. It doesn't just tell you right out, oh, do this one. It's very Silent Hillish. I, I love that. I love that not everything is just given to you up front. You do have to figure things out on your own. And similarly, there was a puzzle where there were two different paintings. And on each of them, you find a, uh, a safe lock, you know, the little dial that you turn. And you have to match those two up with, an, uh, with a safe you find in another room. And on the paintings, there are clues to what the number is. But it doesn't tell you outright. You have to figure this stuff out. And that is, uh, that's beautiful about the game. I did notice a couple of technical problems, but like they said, it is a beta. It's in beta stage. Uh, it's the same demo they played at E3, so no doubt it's been improved since then. But... Uh, the only thing I noticed was sometimes I would get a frame drop and I was playing the Xbox One version, so this was the beefier version. You wouldn't really expect that, but it wasn't too noticeable. It, it barely made a difference at all, and the game looks absolutely fantastic. I saw gameplay of the 360 version uh, previously, and I was looking at it and I was thinking, huh, those water textures kind of bug me. It doesn't look that great, but... Now seeing the PS4 and the Xbox One versions in play, I can tell this game is going to look fabulous. I don't know about the PC version. I, I believe there is a PC version. So that's probably the one I'm going to play if it does exist. But I, I'm totally hyped for this game, guys. It's still my most anticipated game. It firmly stands there. It completely blew away my expectations, which were already kind of high. And like I said, I went into this skeptically, but as I just described... It's everything I've been, I've been dreaming of. I've been wanting from a new horror game. It really is bringing the genre back. So that's what i got to say about The Evil Within. I'm going to go back to enjoying my time at QuakeCon, probably film another couple of videos, and I'll see you guys later. I'm about to go do an interview with Rack, the Rack developers. Uh, so that's going to be nice. And um, just make sure to subscribe to The Investigamer and not productive. See you guys later.